I want to run through 3ds Max to Substance Painter workflows. So the Substance Painter is a great tool and it makes texturing super fast, but it requires planning inside 3ds Max to make get the best out of it. Once your high res model is complete, it's important to really organize your workflow to Substance Painter with lots of elements inside Max. It's really easy to lose track of what's going on and you can make mistakes. And it's better to not go to ink throwing between Max and Substance Painter curing these problems. It's better to solve them in Max first. So um, the main thing is that um, Substance really likes this masking workflow. So if you set up um, materials properly inside Max, then you're going to have a much better time of it. So let's look at that. So here we have um, the high poly model. And uh, before I do anything, let's see what's going on. Yeah, you can still move him around. So he's from ZBrush. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just drag, select everything. And I'm going to go over here to the hierarchy tab. And we're going to go to link info. And we're just going to lock everything. So what can be really frustrating um, if you're when you're doing these workflows is um, you, you're working on something like a bit of mesh, you're doing a bit of retopology, and you just go meek ever so slightly, um, and then your high res mesh and your low res mesh are out of alignment. So it's really important to, um, as soon as you can, lock these down. So here's my low res mesh, I'm going to just lock the move and rotate transforms. That way I know that nothing's going to go wrong. And you can see that my high res mesh and my low res mesh are very well aligned. Okay, so the high res mesh then. So let's get my material editor up. So I'm just going to choose the standard material editor here. So what we want to do is break this guy up um, into different colors. So we can do that pretty easily. So let's make it material, call it red. Just using the standard shader. And we'll set that all the way to red. I'm just going to sign that to him there. And let's make something called blues. We'll sign it to the eyes. And we've got my earrings. So I'm just walking through these very day glow colors, uh, making them as bright as possible. So let's assign that to the earrings. And then lastly, we're going to have our talk. And that can be, let's say, red and green. So, so we've got uh, four very distinct colors and that will help us mask stuff in uh, Substance Designer. Now I could go and add a separate material to these guys but um, you can see that, that it's quite dense down there and that's going to be a lot of work to just kind of select and um, you know get those uh, to have a different material ID and um, it's probably better done with a painting tool inside like Substance Painter. Okay so let's look at uh, and this is called um, the Frankenstein's mat. Um, I don't know where it came from, but it's a great, a great idea. So we just got this Frankenstein mat of different colors. So then we're going to look at um, our low poly mesh. Uh, and something that is worth bearing in mind is like uh, you can see that everything is quite mushy smooth. So the temptation is to go and like harden up some of these edges because it'll look better inside Max. So like for example, we could, uh, if I just grow this, we could have like a sharp edge down here, just between the horns and the rest of the skin, for example. And that does look better inside Max. However, that's definitely something you don't want to do. So you want to make sure that all your object has the same smoothing group. So just kind of select everything and clear it, and then we can set it to smoothing group one. And um, because all your shading information, all those kind of little creases and crevices are all being taken off this high res mesh and with all that detail, and you don't want to um, sort of compete uh, with your edges by having broken normals in here and um, all the other normals in there. That looks a bit ugly across the divide. 
there are a couple of special cases where you may want to break the normals but in general you want to make sure that everything is smoothed as one unit okay so the next thing that is important to bear in mind is that um, how substance painter will see these objects so uh, let's just grab everything and assign a material to it so I'm just going to call this material main So by doing this, I can give it a little colour, let's make it pink or something, there we go. Okay. So that's my main material. Uh, it's been assigned to the low poly object. And when I get into Substance Painter, what I'll see is uh, a little shader group called um, a texture set group called main. And I'll be able to work on that texture set group and I'll be able to paint across that texture te uh, texture set group all in one go. So I might be able to paint across, for example, across the eyelid and maybe add like a little watery divide down here and just paint that all together. Um, now, if I want to paint behind something, for example, this torque, that becomes a little tricky because I can't, unlike Max, I can't just hide things. So the thing to do is where you want to paint behind something you should assign it to a different material and then you can separate out outside in Substance Painter. So I'm going to do that. So let's make a, another material called Metal and I'm just going to assign that to these earrings and that torque. So now we've got Metal and uh, Skin as it were. Now I could assign a separate material to the eyes um, but I think having too many different shaders is just kind of a pain and it, masking in substance is really good so uh, you don't really want to kind of compete with that workflow. Okay so now we've got everything set up for our materials. So the last thing to do is just check our UV coordinates. So I've already gone through and I've um, done some set UVs with these guys and let's just have a look so if I unwrap this uh, you can see that it's, like, it's pretty good. So I've unwrapped these all in their own um, texture page. Just bin that. I just want to check what I do with this guy. And he's got a moderately good set of UV coordinates. And I'll go into how I did that unwrap, but, um, possibly in a different video. So what you want to do is this. You want to select all the objects together in one go. Um, and this is to get them all on the same texture page. So you unwrap them all individually and then you want to group them all together on the same page. So now I'm going to do unwrap. I'm going to open up the UV editor and you can see that everything's just a little bit mushed on top of each other. So the first thing to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to turn on rotate and we're going to start padding to something low like 0.2 and then we're going to click on this pack normalized here. Um, it'd be nice if my face was vertical, so now I've packed that. I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees like that. Now we could do some adjustments just to kind of even things out a bit. Um, so, for example, like the bottom of this mesh here um, is never going to be seen. I don't need it. So, what I can do now is just select all of that and I'm just going to shrink it down by holding down uh, control and that will shrink it proportionally and just move it over there and that will just get that small and then I can just I could possibly even just scale up these guys a little bit more like that and then I can turn off rescale and keep on rotate and then just pack it all again let me get that. Once again, I'd like my face to be vertical, so click, click, that's all good. Okay, so and then just a few final tweaks. So you want to just make sure there's just got a little bit of room to breathe. My earrings. And now that's all good and ready to go. Almost. Just maybe just tweak. Tweak that. There we go. 
like that. That's a bit better. Okay, cool. So now I've got like um, a slightly bigger UV space. Everything's got a reasonable amount of padding between the edges. And that will take account of any bleed that's happening between the textures. Okay, so I can close that down. Now what I have found is that um, if I leave this unwrap on like this and I export the Substance Painter, then for some reason it breaks the uh, UV mapping doesn't hold. So what I think is best to do is, once you're happy, right-click here, Collapse All. And that will just make sure that nothing gets lost when we go to Substance Painter. Okay, so with these guys all textured um, and UV'd, uh, the process is pretty simple. So I'm going to take all this stuff and I'm going to just now export it. So we're going to export an FBX, export selected, uh, and then the dialog, I'm just going to find my Brooks SP thing. So that's going to be called Trade Alien Low. Yes. Uh, so this is all fine. We don't need any animation or cameras, lights or audio. Um, we want to keep our units to be centimeters because that's where it started. Z is up. That is cool. This file format is fine. Okay, that. Uh, and then when we go into high, in fact, I made a little deliberate area which I would just want to bring up. So it's important that to make this work, your suffixes all have lowercase. So you can see this guy has got a higher case. Just need to make sure that that is lower, otherwise it won't bake properly. So now I can just select all of this stuff and I can do the same again. So we're going to do file, export, export selected, trade in high, save that. I'm going to place that thing. So it's the same dialog, all that's off, set is up. Okay, and it's going to give me a warning, I think. It's going to say, plugin will tessellate messages according to the iteration values. Um, Finding objects affected, and that's fine. Now I wanted to do that, so. And that is because the high res torque here has got a turbo smooth modifier on it to deal with making it all nice and smooth. Okay, so that's all good. So now we can jump into Substance Painter and launch the project. So just pause the video to restart Substance Painter.